Hey guys, I'm Joe. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, as you can tell, I'm wearing an apron, which means we're baking today. I'd like to show you how to make a savory crostata with butternut squash, caramelized onion, brown butter, and sage. This savory crostata is great as an appetizer for lunch with a salad or taken to any event where you can enjoy it with family and friends. So for this crostata recipe, we're starting with the actual pie shell. One cup of flour. Quarter cup of whole wheat flour. Quarter cup of cornmeal. Teaspoon of salt. A good grinding pepper. And I'd like to add some fresh rosemary. Just give it a really nice chop. Now you want to whisk it all up so it's evenly incorporated. Now for the butter, we'll want to use about a stick of butter, which is 113 grams. And that would be a little less than half of this block of butter. Is cut this up into tiny, tiny chunks. So what you want to do now is start blending the butter into the flour mixture using a fork or a hand blender, which you've probably seen before. It kind of looks like brass knuckles and it has these metal ridges that help you incorporate butter or shortening into flour, especially used when, it's, when you're making biscuits or other baked goods. You really just want to incorporate the butter into the flour mixture so it's even but still has some chunks. Those little chunks of butter will make your pie dough super flaky and tender. And now what we want to do is add some ice water. This is looking really great. You want it to clump just like this. And there are hardly any dry spots left. Now we're gonna set this aside and get a piece of plastic wrap. And get it all into the center. And don't leave any crust behind. Now what you wanna do is use the plastic wrap to your advantage. Shape it into a disc and you'll want to kind of mash it together just like this. I like to put this onto a plate. It'll actually chill a little better but also the disc can take on the shape of the plate. A great advantage when you're ready to roll it out. Making sure that it's an even thickness throughout. But as you can tell, all these swirls in here are all the butter pieces. It's how you get flaky pie dough. And this goes into the fridge for about an hour, or if you're in a rush, it could go into the freezer for 20 minutes. And there you go, savory crostata pie dough. So to roast the butternut squash, I'm not adding any salt, pepper, or oil. It's just going in the oven just like this. So my oven is preheated to 375 degrees. And we'll let that roast for about 20, 25 minutes. Check on it about halfway through to see how it's doing. You might want to give it a flip or a little stir, but really it's not even that necessary because it's all going to be pureed later. So for this recipe, we're going to caramelize an onion. It's a good idea to cut out the core just a little bit so that they fall into nice pieces when you slice through it. You want slices like, like that, crescent shape. Now we have sliced onions ready to caramelize. And I have a pan preheating at medium high. Just a little bit of oil, doesn't need too, too much and we'll add the onions. At this point, I would recommend adding a pinch of salt because it'll help break down the onions. Maybe another pinch. This 
technique is called caramelizing, but we're not adding any sugar, so nothing will actually caramelize like you would think salted caramel or a caramel candy would taste. We're working out the natural sugars from the onions to caramelize them. So now you see the onions are starting to sweat. They literally look like they're perspiring. This is exactly what you want to begin the caramelization process. So our onions are starting to get nice color. And this is when you want to reduce the heat by one notch at least. Now once again, I've reduced the heat by one notch because as you can see, it's starting to get nice color. The secret is every time it gets darker and darker, reduce the heat so that you're preventing it from burning. So at this point, it's getting very close to the color that we want, but I like to add maybe a tablespoon of water. And this will help the color come up from the pan onto the onions. I'm killing the heat right now. And you have beautiful, sweet, caramelized onions. So our butternut squash looks really good. The color is just right. So I've transferred the hot out of the oven butternut squash to this pot. I'm adding it over some heat. And I don't have a potato masher, so I'm just gonna do the best I can using the tools I have. I'm doing it over the heat helps dehydrate it a little bit so it won't be so watery. I'm switching to a whisk to finish off the job. You really don't have to have a tool for everything in the kitchen. You can always improvise. And as you can see, this is a beautiful, chunky texture. This is a good time to give it a taste because now this is when we add the salt. It's nice and sweet, but we need to bring out more of the flavor with salt. So, a large pinch or two. Give it a taste. It's much better. So for this recipe, we want some sage. You don't need too much because sage is very strong. I like to decorate the top of the crostata with a few sage leaves. So set some of the pretty ones aside to use for decoration. Stack your sage leaves and roll them up like a cigar. And slice them. So for this, we're going to brown some butter. You really only need two tablespoons. Adding it to our pot and putting it on very low heat. With making brown butter, basically what you're doing is you're separating the milk fat from the water content in the butter. And it's a good idea to swirl your pan. Let everything evenly brown. I'm gonna increase the heat a little bit to speed up the process. Now we can hear the sizzle. You can actually smell the butter browning. It's a great indication that you're close to getting brown butter. It's starting to get nutty and sweet. Now you can see the butter is actually browning. Now we can add the sage. You do want the sage to cook a little bit because raw sage isn't very pleasant at all. And this looks good enough to add to our butternut squash mixture. You also want to add the caramelized onions and fold it all together. Only you could smell how wonderful and sweet this mixture is. And now you wanna set this aside and let it cool. 
So we're going to roll out the pie dough on a piece of parchment and this reduces the amount of flour that we would otherwise use. Actually, there will be no flour used in the rolling of this. I don't have a rolling pin, so I will be using this straight-sided jar. And as you can see, the plate really did help form this disc of dough. What you want to do is lay this out just like this. And we'll use the plastic wrap to help us roll. You want to start in the center. Make like an X and another X. So now you've got like an asterisk in the middle. The edges will want to crack. So you'll just kind of want to work those cracks back together. But as this warms up, as you work on it, there'll be less and less cracking. And keep working from the inside because that's where it tends to stay the thickest. And when you start to get bigger and bigger, you can always reposition the plastic wrap. So I've gotten this to about an eighth of an inch. So now before adding the filling, I actually want to give it an egg wash. It'll help create a seal so the dough doesn't get soggy from the filling. And now we add our cooled filling that we made earlier. And don't forget to dock your dough, preferably before you add filling. This ensures it won't bubble up in the oven. Okay, so now what we want to do is fold the sides up. Then I'll just take your reserved sage leaves from before and decorate the top of the tart. Having to use the back of a pan. The oven's been preheated to 425 degrees and you'll want to bake this for about 20 to 25 minutes. So the crostata has been in the oven for about 25 minutes. It's looking really nice and brown and cooked through. I'm pulling the crostata onto the cooling rack very carefully. And here we have our savory butternut squash crostata with brown butter, caramelized onions, and sage. You wanna let this cool to about room temperature before you cut into it. This savory crostata is great as a side dish or an appetizer or even a midday snack. It's also great to bring to parties or any dinner party, events with friends, gathering with family members. It's unique because it's savory instead of sweet.